Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. Hope you're doing well. Big hugs. Hope you're staying safe, staying healthy, cleaning your hands, doing all that good stuff. Uh, welcome to another edition, another episode of uh, self isolation, social isolation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're talking today about getting stuck in a rut and what exactly we can do to get out of it. So before we begin, I would love for everyone in the chat right now to tell me, first of all, if you've ever been stuck in a rut, how did it feel? Uh, what, did, what did you do to try and get out of it? I'd love to hear your stories about getting stuck in a rut. I know I've had, definitely had my fair share of being uh, stuck in different ruts. Uh, and, you know, for, usually for me, it shows up as a kind of apathy towards whatever I'm trying to do. It might be gigs that I'm like less than 100% excited about. Uh, it could be that I just don't really feel like learning some song or some material that I need to for something like that. But let me know in the comments your experiences with getting stuck in a rut and what exactly happened when uh, it did happen for you. So, I'll wait for those things to come through in the chat. Because I've got, I've got a couple of ideas that I think will be uh, really helpful. Well, at least I hope it will be really helpful for you to uh, get out of a rut, which is obviously the, the goal in, you know, in all these kind of things. But, uh, oh, this is interesting. Uh, so uh, I'm not exactly sure how to, maybe Madocci, maybe it's a, an Italian name. Uh, he says, rescued a bass from the woodpile. That's really cool. Started playing bass last spring. I get tired playing the same songs. Yes, exactly. This is something that, uh, I've definitely, well, especially when I was a beginner, I just played the same songs all the time. And it was great to play those songs, but you know, if you play the same song a thousand times, it gets really, really dull, gets really, really boring, uh, not really, really fun, right? So that's how uh, that's how it kind of uh, shows up for Mad, Mad, Madoji? Mad, Madosi? Mad, Mad, I'm not, I, whatever, whatever, however you pronounce that. <laughs> but yeah, that's absolutely uh, a part of uh, getting stuck in a rut, totally. So, uh, ah, okay, here we go. Thomas says, uh, yes, I'm learning how to read music with the Howland Bass Method book, and when it gets difficult, it's hard to continue. Yes, absolutely. When things get tough, uh, it can be really easy to be like, ah, oh, man, and then just, you know, put the bass away, let it gather dust for a, for a couple of months, couple of weeks, couple of years even. <laughs> uh, John says, uh, plenty of times, sometimes just walk away for a while, found, uh, found I was better when I came back. And new strings help get you out of it. <laughs> yep, totally, totally. Uh, I, I can definitely talk about gear in a second. Uh, okay, so Charlie. Okay, I'll, uh, yeah, it's easier is easy to pronounce than uh, than the rest. <laughs> uh, also, Brian says, according to Charlie, uh, I then want to be creative, but lack the ability to just play something random. Uh, okay, interesting. That's interesting. So you sit down and just don't know what to play. You don't know what to noodle around. Uh, so maybe just end up playing the same old things. Ah, yeah, we're going to talk about this, Joe. If you're stuck in a rut, try and listen to music outside your comfort zone. Open up your ears. Uh, will open up your mind. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, this is tough, Maggie. You can't play music with others uh, during lockdown. That sucks. That really, really sucks. Uh, and I, I mean, and there's nothing I can really do about that. <laughs> I, re I wish there was. I wish there was like some switch I could, I could play, I could flick and be like, oh, okay, music's okay. You can play with music now. It's always good. Uh, yeah, okay, so Charlie says, I was that way with six string, walk away and come back later. Absolutely, yeah. So we're going to talk, I've, I mean, everyone's going to be, uh, yeah, and Thomas saying, Thomas is saying, getting tired of playing the same old songs. Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that uh, everyone's different. And I'd like to share a couple of things that could help you out. They've helped me out in the past, helped me get back into the swing of things. And obviously my goal with all these things is to kind of help you play better bass, get you having more fun, and at least get you on the road to being the best bassist that you can possibly be. But uh, I would first like to talk about something I like to call the life cycle of motivation. Yeah, this is this is really cool. Now, motivation, uh, a lot of people will kind of rely on it. They'll be like, oh, I'm really motivated to play right now or you know something like that. Uh, I think it was John who says, uh, put new strings on and it feels really good to play again. Yeah, so you can affect your motivation doing a whole bunch of things. But let's talk about how motivation affects you like on a on a day to day kind of thing. So for beginners, usually at the, at the very start, people are hyper motivated. They love picking up their bass and like just playing whatever. They're, they're like playing songs. They're having a grand old time. Let me just turn up that bass a little bit so you can hear it properly. They'll love playing the bass. They'll play anything you put in front of them. They'll listen to their favorite songs. They'll play all day. They'll try and learn new techniques. 
Motivation is not an issue for people at the very start, usually, uh, unless they're kind of being forced to, you know, play an instrument by, you know, possibly overbearing parents. Maybe, maybe uh, everyone else is in a band uh, playing guitars and drums, and they're saying, "Hey, we need a bass player. Just play this bass line. It goes like this, blah blah blah." And maybe they're not super motivated to do that. That would be totally fine. But in general, beginners are going to be super motivated. Uh, then, though, if things get start, maybe start getting a little bit more difficult, a little bit harder. You know, the motivation that was like at level ten might kind of dip down a little bit to maybe. A, maybe a seven, maybe a six, maybe even a five. So, you know, the, the new songs that beginners were like really excited about learning, they might get a bit stale, they might get a bit old, uh, like a couple of people have already said in the live chat, yeah? Or maybe they're playing songs, you know, they, they start playing these beginner songs, they're easy, and then they go to like the next level up, maybe an intermediate song, and it's a bit harder, so they kind of lose interest because it's a bit beyond them at the moment. And that can be really discouraging. It can be really demotivating when that happens. Uh, the beginner's uh, novelty, the kind of novelty of playing a new instrument, that might wear off. And the kind of realization comes that you're like, oh, okay, this is actually going to take some time. It's actually going to take some effort to, you know, get good at this thing. And that's <laughs> there's something called the, uh, the Dunning-Kruger effect. I'm not sure if you guys know about it, but it's uh, the idea that people who know the least, ab least about something think they're like experts uh, in, in a topic and the people who know the most about it will realize there's so much more that I don't know so they'll you know they'll think they're much more of a beginner than they actually think so there's this point where <laughs> where you realize okay I know this tiny little piece of information but there's 600,000 other tiny little pieces of information I don't know yet and so you're like okay this is going to take some effort and that can be discouraging for some people as well and the motivation dips from maybe you know what we're at like a seven or a six or a five maybe it ducks down to maybe a four or a three because it can be uh, you know, a bit more, the gravity of the situation, I guess, can fall on people's shoulders a bit harder than others. Uh, now, uh, for people who are at an intermediate level, a lack of motivation might come when there aren't any external reasons to keep playing, you know, uh, there's no, I mean, especially now, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember who, who said it in the chat, but there's, there's, I think it was Maggie, yeah, Maggie, uh, she was saying, that there's nowhere no, no one to play with in lockdown. There's no jam sessions, there's no gigs, there's no Sunday church services. Uh, there's very little in the way of you know face-to-face -face music making that can go on at the moment. Uh, and so the drive to play, it might fall. And I'm sure it has for a lot of people uh, being able to, like, no, not, sorry, not being able to play music uh, during lockdown. It really, really sucks. Uh, for professional players, they may, uh, you know, the motivation may dip when they start getting disillusioned with the gigs that they have to do or the projects that they're playing with. Uh, so, for example, uh, if you play in a wedding band uh, and you play 60 weddings in like a two-month period, oh no, that's like one every day. <laughs> that's a lot of weddings. I don't think anyone's played that many weddings. But say you, you're playing uh, weddings every Friday night, every Saturday night, maybe Sundays. Monday weddings are, are becoming a thing now because I guess it's maybe a bit cheaper. I don't know. But if you're playing like four weddings a week and doing that for your entire working year, then that's going to, you know, you might, the motivation might dip down and you might think, ah, oh, do I really want to play another wedding? Or maybe you're playing with a band. Well, I guess you're not playing with a band at the moment. But say you were playing with a band and there was just really, really bad personality clashes and you're like, ah, oh, I just don't want to deal with this band anymore. So the motivation can dip there as well. So the problem of motivation isn't just for beginners, it isn't just for intermediates, it isn't just for professionals. It happens to everyone. It happens. It's happened to me at every, <laughs> basically every stage of my kind of bass playing journey. It happened when I was uh, a beginner, and I, the exact things that you guys are talking about, like uh, playing the same songs over and over, I got sick of it. I'm like, I, there's only so many times I can play the bass line to come together before I just want to strangle someone. Doesn't matter who. <laughs> uh, so the the. Uh, and it happened when I was, you know, starting to become an intermediate player. I started uh, playing uh, a lot more jazz. I was at university and I got really disillusioned with the, the kind of music I was playing. I was like, ah, do I, is this really wanna, what I want to be doing? Uh, I, I had this whole bunch of self-doubt thing happen. And what, what, what I was talking about before about, uh, you know, being a professional, playing uh, a lot of... There's been times when I've been like, oh, I don't really want to play this wedding. Just because, you know, uh, there's not that much variation from wedding to wedding, you know, one wedding might have like a nice uh, fireworks display or something, but uh, other than that, it's it can be a, it can be monotonous, 
and this, uh, that's not to say that you can't find joy in playing in a wedding band because I absolutely have done that and played hundreds of weddings and corporate events and they can be a ton of fun but it can get a little bit disillusioned so what is the solution if motivation is like this thing that kind of ebbs and flows and is very very fickle uh, what should you do instead? Well, the, the, you know, the thing to do is not rely on motivation itself, but build discipline. Yeah, so this, these are very, very different things. Motivation and feeling like it, it's very fickle, right? You're not always going to feel like picking up your bass and like, like doing scale exercises or like playing the same uh, same songs that you've always done you're not always going to feel like doing it and that's okay that's totally fine you don't always have to feel like you have to do all this stuff but if you do want to see the real long-term improvement in your playing you have to be consistent and consistency and motivation are essentially completely incompatible uh concepts right you might wake up tomorrow morning and be like yes today is the day that i master my major modes or some baseline you're working on or some transcription that you're doing but you might also wake up tomorrow and think oh well uh yeah i don't think i'll play my bass today or <laughs> you might not even think about playing your bass at all it'll just completely slip your mind and the more that happens the more your skills can you know potentially wither away a little bit so instead of relying on motivation which is completely fleeting and very unreliable uh, the, the thing to rely on is discipline. The thing to build is discipline. In just about any field in life, you look at the top people, they're almost always the ones with the most discipline. I mean, you think about uh, like Olympic athletes or like top level athletes. You know, swimmers probably don't want to get up at 4 a.m. and go do laps in like a cold pool. I'm sure they'd much rather be like cozy in their beds, nice and warm on a winter's morning, but they have the discipline to do it. Or, or they have those like really overbearing parents like we were talking about before. Um, you also hear, hear stories of uh, like famous basketball players. There's a story, I can't remember who it is. It's like Kobe Bryant or LeBron James, one of the big name basketball players. I'm sorry for the basketball fans. I'm not a basketball aficionado, so I'm not sure who this story was about. But there's stories of the top level guys practicing free throws for hours after their teammates had like gone home or hit the showers or just left practice. So they have the discipline to do that. It's the same with musicians. The more discipline you have, the more practice time you'll end up having on your bass, which means you'll see more improvement in your playing. And this is a lifelong skill. Discipline isn't something that you either have or don't have. It's something that you can build over time. And it's something I still have to have to deal with myself. <laughs> so how do you kind of start building this habit of discipline? Well, I can tell you there's one thing that worked for me and I'm not sure exactly where I heard it from first, but it's uh, called the five minute rule. And it goes like this. If you are feeling apathetic or just don't want to do something, for example, picking up your bass and putting in some time on the instrument, learning a new bass line, learning a song, learning a new scale, whatever it is that you're trying to do, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, uh, pick up your bass and do it for only five minutes, just five minutes. At the end of that five minutes, you may keep going if you want, but you have the complete right, the complete uh, privilege of just putting down your bass and saying, okay, that's fine. Five, I've done my five minutes. That's enough for today. And sometimes, I'm not sure, it'll, it'll depend on who you are and all that kind of thing. But sometimes it's going to be like, yep, that's fine. Five minutes was enough for me. I still really don't feel like playing that much today. Or you might get to the end of five minutes and you don't even realize the five minutes has gone up and you start and you play for 20 minutes and you're like, oh, I was only supposed to play for five, but I ended up playing for 20. Uh, this is something that I, <laughs> I do all the time, almost accidentally. Like when I'm setting up for shooting a video uh, over here on this, there's like a little stool over here. I'll set up the camera and do like a quick uh, check of the footage to make sure everything's in frame, everything's in focus. And I'll just need like three or four seconds of footage. And I'll just be sitting there being like... I'll be like working through ideas or like playing silly bass lines and stuff. I'll play for like two or three minutes when I only needed three or four seconds. Uh, it's, it's it's a really interesting thing that happens when you kind of start getting into uh, a flow state. And it can, can happen really fast if you're into the thing you're doing. But this, this five minute rule is a great way of just having a guilt-free way of saying, okay, I've done the five minutes. I don't need to feel bad about not doing anything. It's totally fine. I can put down the bass and it's going to be totally okay. Yeah, uh, that's 
that's something that I've used a whole bunch, especially when I don't want to do things that, you know, all that stuff. Now, that's one thing that worked for me. Another is this. Go back to music you love for inspiration. This is something that I do constantly. I go back and listen to old music that I used to love, but I've kind of forgotten. I did this recently. I had a gig, uh, like it was like a six-hour driveway, and I was going with a buddy of mine. And we we discovered we had a love for, uh, like when we were teenagers, the band Muse, and specifically the, the album Absolution. And we're like, oh yeah, Muse, Absolution, blah, 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 blah. So we uh, put, the, put the album on because it was the thing to do, right? It was like, ah, oh. and, and I, re- I remember specifically being in this car, being like, oh, I haven't heard these songs in so long, and they're still as good as I remember them. So, you know, sometimes you listen to stuff you used to like, and you're like, oh, that's, oh, that's average at best. But I was listening to this album, I'm like, this is still a killer album. There's still tracks, I'm like, ah, yeah, I could do without that one. I'll skip to the next one. But the bangers, they're still bangers to me. I still love them. I still love hearing them. I still love the way they make me feel, the kind of richness of the harmony, all that stuff. So you can go back to music that you love to find inspiration. And you might end up finding that you're like, oh, I really love this song. Let's try and learn this bass line or something like that. Or even just going over old bass lines or old songs that you've, uh, you've heard before a thousand times, but just playing them again, you know, it can elevate your levels of, I guess, motivation. Uh, and the other thing that I think someone, I can't remember who it was in the comments, also said was uh, allow yourself to be inspired by new music. Open up your ears to new styles of music that you might never have heard of for or might listen to uh, i used to hate have a virulent hate for country music uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure why uh, it's not because i listened to a lot of country music and decided i hated it i think it was just like the quote-unquote cool thing to say oh yeah i like all kinds of music but not that country stuff you know uh, so i'm not sure why or where that came from it's probably just me trying to be cool and being like a little idiot when i was like 14 or something trying to be like oh shit country music's not for me <laughs> but I have a, a huge respect and I, I, I love a lot of... The, I mean, there's going to be music. There's going to be good kinds of all music. There's going to be good jazz music and bad jazz music, good rock music, bad rock music, good pop music, bad pop music. There's going to be good country music. There's going to be bad country music as well. But man, listening to good country music now, I'm like, oh, because I listen to it very differently uh, than I used to back then. And I find uh, inspiration in very different things in country music than I find, for example, in jazz music. And being able to actually go and find styles and things that you haven't ever ever heard before and exposing yourself to them, it can be very, very ear-opening. And if you, you know, have a very narrow band of things you listen to, this is going to be pretty easy. Just go, like, a little bit outside that band. So if you only listen to, like, classic rock, maybe, you know, you listen to some old-school blues. It's, like, fairly related. You may have... Uh, the language is going to be relatively similar, so it's not going to be, like, too much of a stretch to be like, okay, so I like uh, classic rock, Blues is like sort of semi-related. You might go the other other way. You might go, okay, so let's listen to some maybe some uh, some uh, metal from the 80s or 90s. Uh, and then you can kind of broaden your horizons that way. Uh, it might not be the best to be like, okay, I only listen to classic rock and I'm going to listen to uh, Hungarian folk music from the 1940s. There's going to be a bit, of a, <laughs> a bit of a disconnect there. And that's not anything bad to do with uh, Hungarian folk music from the 1940s. Uh, it's just that it's going to, you know, if you're in this particular band, uh, it's going to be a very big jump outside that and you might not get as much out of it. But slowly broadening your horizons is a great way of doing things. And I'll tell you exactly how, like, my, uh, I guess, journey went with this. I was, like, super into basically rock music. I loved old school, like, Pink Floyd, Zeppelin, uh, all the, like, the, you know, the stuff you'd hear on, like, 104 Classic Rock, coming to you from WZY2, or whatever it is, you know, all that stuff, all the, all those, like, classic rock stations, they have it all. So, I, I loved that stuff, uh, and then from there, what happened next? I started delving into a bit more metal, so I went through, like, a bit of a Metallica phase, uh, Megadeth phase, like, uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, heavy metal, I got super into that, and then on the other side of things, I started listening to, listening to, like, funk and soul music, so... Uh, like uh, George Clinton and like all the Stax stuff, uh, Motown. I started like listening to that, and then I uh, I got my hooks into some jazz music, and then that led to uh, uh, Brazilian music and salsa music and all this kind of stuff. And everything just kind of slowly expanded out from there. And there's more music than you can ever listen to in a single lifetime out there. So there's always going to be more and more stuff to find. Uh, but you can allow yourself to be inspired by it, and as long as you can do that, then you're always going to have 
uh, things to practice and, you know, it can help lifting that motivation kind of to spark uh, the, the motivation, which will then hopefully lead to some discipline, which will lead to, you know, long-term improvements in your playing. Now, the other thing that is super important is get to know yourself. What's going to work for you? So I've talked about just three things. I've talked about the five-minute rule, uh, using old music, like music that you already know to inspire you, and using new music to inspire you. But if you don't know yourself and how you uh, kind of operate, then uh, it's not going to, you know, these things might not, not necessarily work for you. So for example, I know myself, I don't really have a trouble, have trouble uh, motivating myself to do things. If I, you know, if I tell myself I'm going to do something, I'm, I'm usually going to do it. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a skill that I've built. I feel like I wasn't always like this, but I learned how to be this way. So I, motivation doesn't necessarily have too much of a sway over me. Sometimes if I have it, great, I'll use it. I'll, I'll do a whole bunch of stuff in one day. But if, I'll, if I've got the discipline, I'm going to you know, do constant things all the time. So getting to know yourself is super important when it comes to getting out of a rut with your own playing. And I would uh, just at least be mindful when you do find yourself stuck in a rut, how do you get out of it? How did you get out of it last time? Because if it worked one time, chances are it can work again. It might not. And if that's the case, then you can try some other things. Uh, get to know yourself a bit better and it might find that the thing that worked the first time didn't work the second time but this, the thing that worked the second time might work the third time if you find yourself stuck in another rut. So those are the, the, the biggest things I can uh, you know mention when it comes to being you know getting out of a rut. Uh, motivation not a good thing. Discipline definitely try and build that as much as you possibly can. Uh, using the five minute rule can work really really well and of course old music and new music uh, is going to be a huge part of, uh, you know, trying to uh, keep things going and do all that stuff. Uh, ah, okay, this is really interesting. Thomas says, I never really cared for the blues, but your blues lesson made me want to learn more. That is super, super interesting. So maybe it could be that for Thomas, that learning about new styles, not necessarily just listening, but learning about them and how they're, how, how they're created, how they're put together, uh, creates uh, some, uh, I guess interest in learning that style or maybe uh yeah i guess interest would be the right word and actually i think this this kind of happened for me with the country music thing i never really uh like listened to much country music until i went on i ended up managing a country music tour with this uh, australian artist named sarah stora and then later with a guy named troy Daly. and i never really listened to that much country music beforehand but after i went on on those tours and like listened to it every night for uh, I think the first tour was like six weeks or something. It was it was like a it was it was pretty long, <laughs> but listening to the music uh, night after night, I truly did d develop a much deeper appreciation, and I learned what it was really all about. Because for me, as a musician, as a bass player, I'm like, oh, what's the music doing? What's the music doing? And if I like, and if you if you just look at things from that one lens, like what is the music doing? What's happening in the music? Like what's the harmony doing? And I liked like complicated music. I was super into. At the, you know, dream theater when I was a, a young kid and I listened to a lot of complicated jazz music at university and all that stuff. So to go to, to a show where it's just literally like three chord songs the whole time, you're like, oh man, this, and you can, this one of two things you can do. You can be like, man, this is a total drag, which isn't usually very constructive. Or you can look out at the, out of the crowd at like a packed theater and be like, why are they here? What do they see in the music that I'm missing at the moment? And I realized it wasn't about like the intricacy of the harmony or any of that. It's about the stories. It's about the, the lyrics. And some of the best lyric writers are country music writers. Like you see all these songwriters in Nashville. They crank out tons and tons and tons of songs uh, like country songs. And they have some of the like some of the best lyrics I've ever heard in my life. Like uh, right up there for me in those terms is uh, uh, songwriters like Casey Musgraves. Uh, what's her first album called? I can't remember. But have a listen to her first album. It's just got some killer phrases, some killer turns of uh, lyrics. Uh, and they're super simple songs. They're not uh, immensely complicated. Uh, the production, especially on that album, is amazing. Uh, but the songs themselves, they're very, very simple. Totally, totally simple. There's nothing, well, not nothing to them, but there's very, very little in terms of uh, musical crazy amounts of harmony or oh there's a bar of seven eight in there like there's none of that because you know that's not a that's not what that music is about uh <laughs> uh let's have a look at some of these comments 
Ah, oh, okay. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, hello for the first time. I need encouragement. That is interesting. That This comes back to the, uh, the thing I was saying about getting to know yourself. So if Stephanie uh, knows that she needs encouragement and that's what's going to get her to, you know, put some time in on the instrument to get some real long-term uh, uh, improvements, then that's great. It's great that you know that already. The question becomes then how do you get that encouragement and is there a way to uh, do that for yourself? Is there a way that you can encourage yourself rather than relying on external things? Because the more you rely on external things, the more kind of uh, fragile your system for improvement becomes. If you have... Uh, you know, if you have like, I need, like, for example, if everything was external, if, if you had to get everything from somewhere else, for example, your base was owned by someone uh, down the street and you had to go to their house to practice, uh, the chances of you practicing every day for as long as you wanted to, to they're going to go lower and lower, right? Because you have to, you know, impose on their time and like use their, their instrument and do all that kind of stuff, which is not great. Uh, if you have your own base becomes a lot easier by yourself. The same goes for the, uh, you know, extrinsic uh, motivators. So if you need someone to be like, yeah, you're doing really well. I, I love how you're doing X and I love how you're doing Y. Uh, that can be, uh, you know, again, it makes your system more fragile because if that, if that turns out that it's not there for any reason, then the ability, your ability to, you know, stay motivated and stay disciplined gets lower and lower and lower which, uh, you know, it sucks. So if you can somehow make that an intrinsic thing rather than an extrinsic thing, then that, that could be super, super helpful. Maybe you do something silly, like write yourself little notes, like you're doing really well, or like, I love the way you sound playing X song. Or you might be like, uh, you might record a little video for yourself, a little motivational video uh, from you in the past. You might be like, hi, Stephanie from the future. I'm Stephanie from the past. I just wanted to say that you're doing really well. I think, you, uh, you, I think you're a great bass player and I think you're only going to get better over time. So keep practicing and I'll, I, I can't wait to see what your improvement's been like in six months from now, one year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. I'm sure you're going to be an amazing bass player. It might be something like that. It sounds silly. It definitely sounds silly. But if it works and you know yourself well enough that that's going to work for you, if it works, do it. Absolutely do it. It's going to work well. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, um, John says, uh, oh, after I played a little river band uh, in a lesson, I went back to play the music again. Yeah, this is, this goes back to the, you know, using old music to inspire you and, you know, make things click in your mind and all that stuff. Totally, totally, totally. Uh, ah, yeah, this is really good. Uh, uh, the subreddit R music uh, could be a thing, could find uh, things outside the genre you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's another one as well. Uh, R listen to this, which uh, uh, some really cool stuff on there as well. Uh, let's have a look. Ah, Darren says, I don't laugh, but I started listening to Christi Christian music and there are some amazing bass players out in that community. Absolutely. There's nothing, nothing to laugh about at all. There's some absolutely amazing uh, bass players in all genres, including uh, Christian, Christian music. And there's some, like, there's some incredible uh, uh, gospel uh, musicians uh, like all over the world. Like I'm, I'm thinking of guys like, like check out Kirk Whalen's band, like just incredible musicians, like every single one of them playing some incredible music. Uh, yeah, have since been listening to Duck Dunn and feel inspired. Yeah, inspiration can be a total, uh, uh, I guess, spark that can spark some motivation, which can then lead into discipline. The trick is to, uh, a lot of times, use motivation that you have to kind of snowball that into something that's more, uh, well, I, guess, I, I should say less fragile, because like I said, motivation is very fragile. It's very, it ebbs and flows and all that kind of thing. Uh, all right, let's see. Um, ah, this is interesting. Brian says, I think my rut might just be being at a plateau. I can't figure out how to break through. I've been bugging my teacher or tutor to hopefully get some things to practice to help. Absolutely. If you are at, are at a stage where you think your skills are just plateauing, I'll just get rid of this. It's quite taking up a lot of space. If your skills are definitely at a plateau and you feel like you aren't improving that much, uh, absolutely look for some new things to practice. Also, just, uh, just be aware that uh, improvement isn't always going to be like, oh, where are we? going to be like this or, or like this yeah i think that's the, that's a correct like it's going from down from the left up to the right it's not a straight line improvement goes like this you like have like crazy improvement for a little bit and then there's this plateau and then you reach another 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 stage something unlocks in your mind and you have like a a brief uh you know uptick in the amount of improvement you have and then another plateau the more you play the longer the plateaus get and the the smaller the improvements get yeah, so at the start, you have very big jumps in ability and then very short plateaus and then, you know, a smaller jump and then a longer plateau, a smaller jump, a longer plateau. So the more you play, the longer your plateaus will seem 
and uh, the the you know the smaller the jumps in improvement seem to get. That's normal. That's totally fine. Uh, yeah, but having having new things, having a teacher is great because they can look at your playing and say, okay, these things need improvement, uh, and you know do these things in order to improve them for sure. All right, let's have a listen. Ah, this is really cool. Lavelle says, my mother listened to the blues growing up and I was motivated recently to do it more because of the emotional connection. Yes, absolutely. So if you have uh, some style of music that you have some kind of visceral connection to, so for example, uh, Lavelle's mother. Yeah, that's like that's a very visceral connection. That's like the, the one person that you've known your whole life and all that kind of thing. So uh, having a reason to learn that as a way of connecting with that uh, that side of your you know parents' musical stuff, that's a total, total, uh, what's the word? It's a totally valid way of uh, approaching things for sure. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> uh, Charlie says, I mute TV commercials and play during the commercial. I get many short sessions in. That's cool. That's, this, this, goes, this, this is awesome. This goes right back to this, getting to know yourself. So if, if, if Charlie knows that he, uh, he's going to get the practice in if he just plays during the commercials, then absolutely do it. That's great. That's so, so cool. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, um, uh, uh. <laughs> says, and now learning uh, more new pop songs because my kids listen to it. Now they can laugh at dad playing bad guy, senorita. Yeah, th by the way, the, the, the bass line in bad guy is sick. It's super sick. Uh, I'm not, uh, which senorita are you talking about? The Justin Timberlake one or the um, other one, which now I can't remember how it goes or who it's by. But yeah, totally. I, I if when when I whenever I have kids, I'm totally gonna uh, learn the music that they like and then embarrass them with it. <laughs> My evil plan is coming to fruition. <laughs> uh, nice. Uh, oh yeah, Thomas says uh, yeah, talking about uh, extrinsic uh, motivation and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I've um, yeah, I guess I'm into the psychology of music and all that kind of stuff. It's I'm it's interesting to me and it's fun to talk about and it's fun to use it in order to you know uh, try and improve all the stuff. Uh, ah, this is good too. Recording yourself helps tremendously. Yeah, if uh, and John, if it if it works tremendously for John, awesome. I know some people they record themselves and they hate the sound of it, and it, it can actually be a discouraging thing. Uh, so you have to you might have to be a little bit careful. But uh, it's really good to build the discipline of recording yourself on a regular basis, so you can hear yourself and think, okay, so the trend, like for example. Be like okay that transition from that G to that D flat was a little bit too long I need to make to try and make sure it's like nice and tight all that kind of thing you do have to be a little bit careful about that one but once again it comes back to knowing yourself and knowing yourself really really well uh, now uh, I'm not sure what this means notice I've changed my Zathras icon is that is this like the <laughs> the um, the little profile picture there I'm not, oh yeah I wasn't sure what that was it looks like a I don't know, from like a vampire movie or something. Uh, ah, Joe says, Luke, are you a fan or appreciate Matt Freeman of Rancid's playing? I don't really know that much uh, Rancid stuff. I think I've heard maybe a couple of songs. Uh, but I guess I, <laughs> I guess I didn't like it enough to uh, like find more stuff. Uh, I know the names, uh, but I don't really know much of the material. Uh, but I know he's very popular. I know Rancid have a, have a, a, a rabid following, if I can mix my, mix my names. Now, if you guys had any questions about, uh, you know, how to kind of get, uh, if you have specific questions about ruts that you're in right now, uh, that could be uh, an amazing uh, point to ask questions. I'd love to help out as much as I can. We'll do a couple of minutes of uh, quick Q&A. Uh, and if you have questions, I'd love to hear them. I'd love to help out as much as I possibly can. Uh, now, I, oh, this is one thing I forgot to say. When I was uh, in university, I started playing like a lot of jazz music, started playing upright bass. And I did get to the point where I was like, ah, oh, I'm not sure if this is like really what I want to do. Uh, and I, I used the going back to music you love uh, to try and reinvigorate my passion for the music that I was playing. And the album that I loved when I first, like the very first jazz album that I liked, because I, I listened to jazz at the start. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I guess it's cool. It's just like a bunch of people making a bunch of noise. And I guess that's true of all music. <laughs> but I didn't really understand what was going on. But the first... Uh, jazz track and the first jazz album that I loved uh, was John Coltrane's Blue Train. It's from like 1964 or something. It's super old now, but man, it was it was just super exciting to me. And I loved the music, uh, and I it was on in I had like an actual physical CD. This was back in the day before I had an iPod. 
uh, like even like the original iPod. Uh, so I, I'd have this CD in my car and I'd listen to it on loop for about, it must have been like two or three months at least because I could sing that whole album back to front. And after, you know, a couple of years of, uh, you know, being in university, doing the jazz thing, I was like getting the whole disillusion, like, oh, I'm not sure if this is what I really want to do. I went back and listened to that album and it completely reinvigorated my love for the music. And I'm like, yeah, this is, I'm doing the right thing. This is all good for sure. Uh, so I, I like, I'm practicing what I preach. I will, at least I've practiced what I've preached in the past. <laughs> uh, all right, let's have a look at some questions. Uh, okay, so Wakaz Safraz says, uh, hello, I'm a beginner, play bass for my band. I can make better grooves from my mouth, but when I'm jamming, I'm stuck and can't think the way, think and play the way I should. Any suggestions, please? Yes, absolutely. Get your phone, uh, record the grooves you make with your mouth uh, and record them into your phone and try and transcribe them onto your bass. So for example, if you if you like had this sick idea for a groove that went dun, dun, ba -da -da -ba -ba -boom -boom. Okay, so what were those? I'd record that. Uh, oh, okay, I was out of tune. So actually transcribing yourself. It sounds really weird. Like you think of like transcribing, oh, I'll transcribe the greats and uh, figure out what they were doing in the music and all that stuff. But transcribing your own ideas is a great way of uh, getting the connection between your mind and the bass and like removing all those barriers there. Uh, it's easily the best way I know how to uh, get your fingers to do what your brain is saying, right? So recording yourself, figuring out exactly what you're playing. The trick with this is that your ideas have to be very crisp. You, you can't be, you can't have any ambiguity like, oh, where's beat one? Or like, is that is that like a rest there? Or like, how long should that rest be? The ideas have to be very well formed in your mind before you kind of record them. Uh, but you know, you can work through your ideas and do all that stuff. I've got literally hundreds of like different ideas that I've just sung into my phone. I'll be like, in the middle of doing something completely unrelated and this like idea will pop in my mind, I'll just be like voice memos, blah, 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 blah into my phone and I've just got, and I've, I just call them stupid stuff and I'll come back later and some of them will be good ideas, some of them will be questionable, some of them will be like downright horrible. Some of them I'll realize, oh, that's actually the song that I must have been hearing at the time. <laughs> so I'm just like completely ripping people off. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. Uh, uh, so don't, yeah, definitely don't do that. But uh, yeah, recording yourself, and uh, eliminating the barriers between your mind and your fingers, that's the best way of doing things. Uh, and this, is, this isn't this is something that's gonna happen overnight, unfortunately. It's gonna take a bit of time to get around the idea of doing all that stuff. But the more you do it, the easier it gets, the quicker you can do it. And then you can just be like, okay, so if I know my first note is All that kind of stuff. Uh, and this is also very helpful for yeah, improvising and all that kind of thing. I mean, this isn't just a, uh, a good idea for uh, like what uh, Wakaz is saying. You want to do this for like improvising, for creating bass lines, for jamming with people, for writing music. Like it's the best way of doing things for sure. Uh, yeah, Thomas says trying a new technique can help. I always play with a pick and started to learn to play with my fingers. I found I came up with different lines. Absolutely, yeah. The, if you, uh, you know, change... Uh, you can change your technique, you can change uh, some of your gear. So for example, uh, uh, if you are playing like a, on, a, on a P bass the whole time with a pick and then you start playing on like a jazz bass with your fingers, you might you know, come up with more slap lines because the ghosts of the music can sometimes live in the instrument. And you know, all these like famous slap players, they play jazz basses. So you're like, okay. All that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, new gear can absolutely uh, spark some new stuff for sure. Uh, okay, here we go. David says, uh, would having a schedule help or would that just make practice more of a chore? I've actually tried this. I've tried doing the practice journaling thing and I, for me, I hated it. It wasn't for me, but some people I know uh, love it. I've, I've got a, a singer friend who religiously chronicles uh, her practice, uh, which is something that I would hate. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly specifically what she uh, writes down. Like, I'm sure it's like, the, the amount of time and what she practiced, but I'm not sure if she like writes down how she was feeling or like any other notes about that kind of stuff. Uh, she's, uh, you know, she, she, and also she, by the way, she's a very different person than I am. <laughs> We're very different people, but like, she's still a great person. Uh, uh, but yes, this comes back to that other thing I was saying before about uh, knowing yourself. So if you know that having a practice schedule or a practice journal or any of those things are going to help you, then absolutely go for it. 
Uh, if it's not though, and or if you try it and you're like, oh, this isn't really working for me and it's not your thing, then by all means, don't do it. You don't have to do it. There's nothing here uh, in this video that you have to do. It's all about this. Get it? Well, I, I would suggest you do this, get to know yourself, <laughs> but hopefully you're doing that anyway. Uh, now, uh, let's see. Ah, okay, it says, uh, do you have any suggestions for fun or cool songs to learn to improve technique and motivate motivate those in the stream tonight? Uh, well, again, I can't make specific recommendations because, uh, you know, you might learn uh, like one song and absolutely love it. Someone might learn that same song and be like, this song sucks. I hate this. And it's going to be completely demotivating uh, for them to do that. What I can recommend, though, is uh, finding uh, new music that you enjoy. So, for example, if you uh, like are on Spotify or uh, is Pandora still a thing not sure but if it is uh try and find some new music in the same vein of the music that you like so uh you know i think pandora has like suggestions or if you like love a specific artist put on uh, the spotify like that artist's radio so it's going to have a lot of that artist but also similar artists some of them you might not know some songs you might not know you're going to find uh cool songs to learn that hopefully are going to be in the same vein that you're going to like and it's going to motivate you uh to practice um yeah, cool songs to improve your technique. Again, that depends on your technique. So, for example, if you're like wanting to learn slap stuff, uh, obviously you need to learn some slap bass lines. <laughs> um, like I've, I've, I've got a, a video from a couple of weeks ago about like uh, beginner slap lines you can learn. Uh, but if you're like wanting to learn to play with a pick, you're obviously not going to learn, you know, flea slap bass lines. You might want to start off with like some Adam Clayton picked bass lines or something like that. Uh, yeah, Thomas says changing strings that are inspiring. Uh, yeah, definitely switching to flats is going to get a different tone. It's going to affect the ideas that come out because you're going to hear music differently. You're not going to play the exact same things for sure. Uh, okay. Ah, here we go. To try and continue playing with friends to keep up with our inspiration and connection during stay at home, how can we play simultaneously without a delay or lack in... Uh, is that supposed to be cinch? Uh, sync? Uh, yeah, this is a tricky one. Uh, I haven't come across something that is perfect yet. Uh, the closest I saw was a uh, was a, a something called Jam Kazam. I'll just get rid of this real quick. Uh, which uh, I played with a drummer friend of mine, and there were definitely points where it was like uh, not perfect. There's going to be like some delay at some point in the chain. It might be my internet, it might be their internet, it might be Jam Kazam's server, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's yeah, it's not perfect, but it's probably the closest thing I've found. Uh, if anyone actually has used Jam Kazam uh, in the live chat, let me know. I'll, I'll be curious to see what your uh, experience of it has been like. Because I just I just did it like once with a friend of mine just to see how it worked. Uh, but yeah, playing simultaneously is is a bit of a problem. You can do uh, remote recording uh, really easily with uh, like free software like GarageBand and uh, an audio interface or even an iRig with your phone. You can just plug straight into your phone. Well, not straight in. You can plug into your iRig and then plug that into your phone. And you, you can record to your phone. Uh, but it's not the same thing. I, I totally understand what you're saying about having that live connection and being able to interact musically. Like, there's nothing better than that. It's, it's impossible to do if everyone's locked down. Uh, what is the best way to record yourself? Uh, this, again, is... I can't give like a proper answer. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to record yourself for practice purposes, just use your phone. Like there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to pick up uh, the bass well enough for you to hear it back and be like, okay, where's, where am I doing X? Where am I doing Y? Am I doing this wrong? Does this need to be uh, accented more? All that stuff. It's going to give you a more objective view of your playing. Uh, that's if you're just kind of recording yourself for your own purposes. If you want to record yourself at a more, quote unquote professional level, then you probably need to have uh, some kind of way of recording your bass with a direct line. And usually that means having an audio interface or like I was saying before with a, with a phone, having an iRig. And I've got some videos on that uh, on, on the YouTube channel from oh, maybe a couple of months ago now, four or five months, uh, about uh, you know how to record yourself using just your phone and how to record yourself using an interface, which you can get for less than a hundred bucks. Uh, like just get like a, 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 a Focusrite Scarlet something. Yeah, you find them on, on Amazon, like a hundred bucks, and you're going to get like a studio quality level recording. Uh, yeah, and it's going to be relatively easy to set up. Like you just plug your interface into your computer, your bass into your interface, and usually it's going to work straight out of the box. Uh, and that's going to give you a way better signal than 
you know, recording to a voice memo on your phone. Which again, is fine if that's what you have and that's what you want to use to just record yourself practicing. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's the, you want to get a, a really tight feedback loop if you're doing that. So you want to play something, record it, listen back, and adjust your playing and just repeat that process uh, again and 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 again. All right. Uh, Darren says, I've got the hang of the slap, but believe it or not, I'm having, a pro I'm having using problems tapping. I thought it would be easy, but I just cannot get it at all. I have a, a, a video on tapping from years ago now. It's super, super old school. Uh, and and to, just to be clear, I've, I'm pretty sure uh, Darren here is talking about like this kind of tapping. Oh, pardon me. That kind of tapping? I'm, I, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm guessing. Oh, let me just do this. That's what I'm guessing uh, Darren's talking about here. And uh, definitely check out that video. But if you want the quick, uh, really, really dirty uh, version, uh, I use like two fingers like this when I'm tapping because one finger just by itself isn't enough. I mean, it can be, but it's good to have that extra support of having two fingers there. Doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, I never really use that. <laughs> it's super fun to do, but I've... I, I, I think the last time I would have used that on gig would have been at like a battle of the bands playing an original song where I was like, I just wanted to be super wanky and be like, Bleh. had like a wah pedal and stuff. This is back in the days when I used a, a bunch of pedals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, cool. So I hope, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, where are we? Oh, I've lost my place in the comments. Where are we? Oh. <laughs> Joe says, if you're stuck in a rut, then listen to the ruts. Yeah, t totally. <laughs> ah, I, this is good. Uh, Waka says, thank you. I'll pr practice and practice and practice. Awesome. Uh, love from Pakistan. Awesome. Thank you. Love from Australia as well. Uh, let's see. Um, ah. uh, Domingo says, I learned the chord progression on guitar, then I'm trying to play the bass line. It really helped me to remember the chords at least. Yeah, absolutely. If you know a second instrument and that helps you uh, learn the bass as well, absolutely go for it. That's totally, totally into it. I'm sorry, I'm totally, totally into it. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this name. I'll, I'll pronounce the middle name, Michael. <laughs> uh, it says, may I suggest to immerse oneself in learning a myriad of grooves and then modifying, modifying them to your task at hand. Absolutely. This, this is nothing uh, better than learning new things and new grooves. It's going to open up your mind and hopefully, you know, get that spark of motivation, that spark of inspiration, which will then snowball into, you know, that big avalanche of discipline, which is going to make things a lot easier. All right. Oh, wow. Comment Man says, it's good to finally catch a live stream. I'm at the UK, so it's 2 a.m. That's awesome. So, so you, you know, you staying up late. Uh, hopefully you haven't fallen asleep yet. <laughs> Brian says, uh, uh, Jammer is supposed to let you jam online with others, but I can't imagine there being uh, delays. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem. Uh, if we, if we all had like uh, multiple terabytes uh, of download speed, it would be uh, less of a problem. Uh, but yeah, there's always, at, at this point at least, uh, I'm not sure internet infrastructure, at, at least definitely not in Australia, is, <laughs> is, uh, is up, to, up to scratch in being able to play delay-free. Uh, if you have like military-grade internet, then it might be easier. But yeah, all these things uh, gets a little bit harder with uh, internet as well. Uh, okay. Ah, yeah, this, um, yeah, John says, uh, I use a tap, oh, come on. I've lost my comments. Anyway, John says he uh, says he uses a handheld task game recorder. Yeah, those things can be really good. Or like the Zoom ones are really good too. Uh, much better sound quality than using a, a phone or something like that. Probably not quite as, uh, I guess, uh, isolated and direct as having an audio interface, but definitely it'll give you a very good idea of how you sound outside of yourself for sure. All right, so we've been going for, a, for oh, coming up close to an hour, nearly 50 minutes now. So let's call that a day. Thank you so much for, for showing up live, asking questions and doing all that kind of stuff. You guys are absolute legends. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here, being with me, showing a bit of support. Thanks for, you know, creating a bit of a little base community on uh, the old YouTube channel. I uh, hope you're doing really well wherever you are in the world, whether you're in lockdown or uh, self-isolation or quarantine or whatever it is uh, where you are. Uh, I'll be back here next week doing more of the same, uh, hopefully more of best stuff as well. Uh, but I will catch you guys uh, very, very soon. Much love. Big hugs. I'll catch you soon. <laughs>